It's April the 22nd, 1915. Germany debuts its newest weapon in its chemical arsenal, chlorine gas. 150 tonnes of it smothers the Allied line north of Ypres. With nothing to protect themselves, just over a 1,000 were killed and 7,000 injured. So what happened immediately after that attack? Well, Britain began developing its own chemical weapons and, critically, gas masks. By 1918, the British Army had developed a range of innovative protection methods that heralded the birth of the modern-day military respirator. British company Avon Protection makes tens of thousands of gas masks and filters for the UK military every year, and they have a long history of doing it. It started during the Second World War when they made 20 million military and civilian gas masks. As with most industries at the time, the factory was largely staffed by women and a large part of the production process was done by hand. I wanted to find out more, so I went to the company's factory in Wiltshire where the team had gathered some fascinating pieces from their archives for us to take a look at. The first respirator that was developed for the Second World War was this example here. You can see that this is a fabric coated rubber face piece with twin eye pieces and a forward facing exhale valve. But interestingly, in this example, the filter is connected to the mass of our hose and you've got this rather bulky metal contained filter. This would have been at, at that time because the carbon technology was in its infancy um, and the fabric coated rubber would have been what was available at the time. It may have been used at that time for clothing, for example. War is often a catalyst for technological advancement. It was certainly true for the development of synthetic rubbers and in turn, gas masks. So what that would have led through the development in the Second World War is from this product here into a product like this, where you can now clearly see that this is a rubber face piece. It's no longer fabric coated rubber. So the technology has moved on into a, into a more, more likely a synthetic rubber that has got all of the chemical properties that are required still for a product like this. And by 1943, what Avon was producing was starting to resemble the modern respirator. But the key difference is the filter. The filter is now much smaller, much more compact, and because of that, it's now able to be attached to the mask. So now instead of having this bulky filter that you've got to carry on your body somewhere, the filter's contained in a more traditional position on the face. It's incredible, isn't it, that, you know, all this has come about during the course yes, of, the, of the period of, of the Second World War. Yeah. While war accelerates advances in technology, post-war often sees a slump in progress. In the 1950s, this is what was on offer to British troops, the S6. It wasn't manufactured by Avon, but the company did have some involvement. It was a step up from the masks of World War II. So the S6 was renowned as a very comfortable respirator because it had this unique airbag seal. The airbag seal made it made it fit very comfortably on your face. It was recognised that, the, that those early masks from the, from World War Two. I mean, there was nothing to properly seal it apart from tightening up the Correct. head strap. Yes, wasn't yes. it? Yes. This is a big effort now to increase the fit. So we're moving really from something which is just designed to give you some protection, but something now which is designed to actually aid you doing your job. During the Iranian embassy siege in 1980, the whole world got to see the follow-up to the S6. The S10 was worn by the SAS to protect them from the tear gas they were using against the terrorists. It was a step up from its predecessor, you could drink while wearing it, and communication was easier. On the side of it, this doesn't actually look significantly different to the ones that we saw in, at the end of 1945. So what, what's the difference in relation to the filter? Yes, you're, you're right. The filter in terms of its diameter and its thickness looks very similar to some of those early filters. The key differences in the technology now, though, with these filters is that they will protect against a much broader range of chemicals. So you're starting to take in a, a broad range of chemical warfare agents and you're also starting to take into account toxic industrial chemicals, a lot of which exist out, out there in industry as well. So the filter really hasn't reduced significantly in size, but the level of protection that it will provide or the broadness of the protection has increased significantly. And that brings us up to today and the kit that's distributed to all British personnel, the UK General Service Respirator, which came into service in 2011. The improvements include a panoramic visor and two filters to make it easier to breathe. So what does the future hold for military respirators? What the users are telling us is that they might want a product that complements that slightly, something that can be donned and doffed much more easily and much more quickly, and maybe have a slightly lower burden. So this is leading towards a product uh, like this one here on the end, which we're calling MITRE. This is a separate 
uh, goggle system and, and face piece. The goggle system has actually got air blown into it to keep, the, to keep it demisted and provide better protection. And the goggle system can be very easily mounted to the face and interacts with the goggle. Um, and this will give you something which you can take on and off very quickly. It'll protect you against right control agents and particles, but it's a much lower burden product. Something the troops of both world wars can only have imagined. Claire Sadler, Forces News, Wiltshire. Thanks for watching. For more from Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.